bet you saw one today. Probably you saw a lot of them, and you probably obeyed their orders. We're talking about traffic lights on streets all over the world. Leon Bibb is here with this, with this week's My Ohio. And Leon, you have the story of the first traffic light. It came from a Clevelander. He was quite a guy, too, quite a guy. You know, we sometimes think traffic lights have been around ever since the first car. Not so. Before the early 1920s, the roads were a hodgepodge of drivers. There were no rules of the road until a Clevelander came along. It all began pretty close to here, a Cleveland crossroads. Our world changed that day. We've not been the same since. It was an invention to help us maneuver through life. Invention of the traffic light in the early 1920s. It still stops us in our tracks, holds us for a moment, and then flashes the go-ahead. A Clevelander gave the world its first three-position traffic light. He saw the need coming because of an explosion of traffic on the roads in Cleveland and America. Life was changing. Right around the First World War and right after, there were so many new cars on the streets that people began to realize that there needed to be some kind of rules of the road. There were none. It was a madhouse out there. Drivers jockeying for position, changing lanes or turning without even glancing to see if somebody else was barreling through the intersection. Enter Clevelander Garrett Morgan, credited with inventing this first-of-a-kind traffic light. Before the light went up near East 105th and Euclid Avenue, a light bulb went off in Garrett Morgan's mind. Story goes it was in the 1920s. Garrett Morgan looked out his window. What he saw were Fords, like this one, and Chevrolets and Dodges, too, all bumper to bumper in traffic. Drivers were changing lanes and blowing through intersections without regard for the other guy. Two, three cars get to the intersection at the same time. Who goes first? And if you don't decide that, then there's problems. Ed Pershy of the Cleveland History Center of the Western Reserve Historical Society has studied Morgan's story. Born in 1877, Morgan was the son of slaves. He moved to Cleveland in the 1890s and became a tinkerer of things mechanical. Into the 20th century, vehicles like these roared by. It took pedestrians' fancy footwork to stay out of their way. There was fender benders in this car clutter and confusion world. So Morgan tried out his traffic signal, which required a cop to turn on the stop and go lights. It was a hit. So when they were all up in one configuration, all the traffic at an intersection had to stop. Part of the way down it could go slow. They were all the way down, depending on which way it pointed, this, this line of traffic could go ahead, this one had to wait. Garrett Morgan's idea started popping up worldwide. It was not an easy go of it. Morgan was black and struggled to get credit because of that. He had a disguise. He couldn't appear at, at places to promote his idea because he was African American. I don't want people to know any part of that. But the traffic signal caught on. Later, someone added red, green, and yellow lights. All this brought on more cars, affordable ones, too. It's bumper to bumper automobiles. I mean, they're, the Model T is the prime example, but people can afford to buy all kinds of automobiles. Some families said we ought to get one of them cars. Yeah, I'd like to drive something nice, another family said. That's the way it was in Cleveland, which was the automobile capital of the world, even before Detroit, from the late 19th to the early 20th century. Cleveland was so much on a roll, the city had its own way of doing some driving. In 1935 and 36, about the time this Chrysler was tooling down Euclid Avenue, there was such a thing as the Cleveland left-hand turn. It was a different way to make a left-hand turn in a car. Nobody else in the world had it, just Cleveland. So big a deal it was, there was a how-to-do-it guide for out-of-towners. To make a lefty stay in the curb lane, through the light, make a gentle left, but not all the way, hang there for a moment. When you can go, take the full lefty. Well, we don't do that anymore, thank goodness. But around the world, we do follow traffic lights which blink their orders. It all started in Cleveland with inventor Garrett Morgan. He was quite a fellow. Garrett Morgan told us when to stop and when to go. Garrett Morgan also invented what he called the safety hood, basically a gas mask. In 1916, when the city was building a pipeline from the Lake Erie water crib to the Cleveland shoreline, there was an explosion. Gases filled the pipeline. Construction, workers there. Morgan donned his gas mask and went in, pulled several men out, saving their lives. 
This is Leon Bibb reminding you the Cleveland Water Treatment Plant is named in Morgan's honor and his memory. And advising you when you watch the red light, watch the red light and That's stop. Right. <laughs>